Hello my friends, my name is Forge and welcome to our brand new video. So today I'm going to be showing you a really cool new behavior mechanic which you can do with add-ons. You can now turn the entire world into a single void world or you can change the build height of your world to which you can build much higher up or much lower down. So without any ado, let's get right into the tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, then consider subscribing as it helps out quite a bit and shows your support for the channel. Thank you. When you first load up Bridge, you'll need to choose the folder of where your project will be saved to. Now this can pretty much be anywhere that you want, but once you choose the folder that you want to save your project to, just choose select folder and then choose view files. Then after that, it's going to have to get saved, then you'll need to drag your combat merging folder. In order to find your combat merging folder, go over to this directory in your file explorer and you'll find it in the description. Go ahead and choose combat merging, grab your combat merging, then drag that right over to bridge and then let go. Then after that, you need to choose yes. Once you have saved your changes, Choose your editor type. We need to choose our editor type. How do you want to edit your JSON files? Do you want to use raw text or a tree editor? If you're really advanced or intermediate, then the raw text is going to be your option. But however, if you're a beginner and you have little to no JSON knowledge, then the tree editor is for you. But you can also use it if you're an intermediate creator. I'm going to choose tree editor because for me, it's a lot simpler. When you got everything all set up, by default, you won't have anything inside Bridge. You won't have any projects or anything whatsoever. But for me, I've already been using Bridge, so I already got a few projects. But what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to choose project and new project. Then we got ourselves a bunch of options. You can use a behavior pack and a research pack, skin pack, or a world template. But since we're focusing on dimensions, I'm only going to be using behavior packs. So I can deactivate that. Then head down to experimental gameplay and you need to turn on holiday creator features and upcoming creator features. Then scroll down, go down to individual files and you can leave this on if you want to. But for me, I'm just going to turn them both off. Then we have our project name. Then the description is completely optional. The prefix is going to be displayed at the beginning of each name. When you're editing a name within a file, you'll need to choose the prefix and then the identifier. And then we have our target version for this. Since we're talking about dimensions, I'm going to keep it on 1.19.0. Then I'm going to choose create. And once your project is created, you'll need to go down the file, go down to new file. Then sometimes it will take a little bit of time to load up. Go down to simple files. Then you need to find dimension, which we have right here. If you select a different project target version, like let's say 1.18, then dimension will not show up. So by going to 1.19, then we have access to the dimensions. So after that, go down the file name and name this wherever you want. As of right now, the overworld is the only dimension that we can edit. So you can't edit the nether or the end. You can only edit the overworld. But maybe in the future, they may end up changing. Create, and then it's going to create up the file. Now once the file is created, you'll need to go down the format version. And you can select between 1.18 all the way to 1.19.0. I'm going to keep it on 1.19.0. Then I'm going to select dimension. And we have our description. The description has the identifier within there. Choose identifier. Then right here you have Minecraft overworld. Go down to components. And the only components that we have right now is dimension bounds and generation. The dimension bounds is basically the height of your world, with aka the build limit. And then generation is how the world generates. If I were to choose generation though, and then I select add generator type, the only generator type that we have right now is called void. But I would so so love it if they were to introduce more generator types, like maybe a cave generator type. Like can you imagine creating up an entire world that's just one big cave? I think that would be quite fun. Or maybe floating islands. We're going to test out void first. Since we made the file format version 1.19, I will need to be within the beta or the preview. And next up, let's go back to components and we're going to go for dimension bounds. As I stated, the dimension bounds is basically how big the world is from the bottom of the world to the top of the world. So we're going to go down to add and we're going to choose minimum. The minimum and maximum, it can be from negative 512 up to positive 512 which in total is 1024 blocks. That is quite a lot of space to build in. For our minimum, we're going to make this negative 80. And then for our maximum, we're going to make this 400. And that's basically all done now. So the next step is testing out the add-on. So once you're inside Minecraft, go ahead and click on play beta. When you're creating up a brand new world, you need to go down to experiments and turn on holiday creator features and upcoming creator features. Then go down the behavior packs and make sure you activate your pack. And then we can create the new world. And once the world is loaded up, 
you will notice that you're now in the void. But we have an entire world that goes all the way to negative 80, all the way to 400 blocks, which in total is 480 blocks. So you got a very big void world to build in. Now next up, we're gonna load this up inside of an existing world. So we have ourselves active packs and I've activated our pack. You also need to turn on holiday creator features and upcoming creator features. And here we are inside the world and everything seems pretty normal. This will only account for the world build limit. This does not account for new generated chunks, only the old chunks. So you won't be experiencing like a deeper underground or anything like that. It's only going to be a different build limit. And if I were to go to anywhere where new chunks would normally be, then you just get a big void. If you continue going outwards, then you'll just find these chunks of land. Which is 80 extra blocks from what you could build from before. Because usually the build limit goes up to 320, but now it goes up to 400 blocks. So you now got a lot of room to build in. So I decided to see what was under the world, and this is what I find. My goodness, what a big chunky mess. But I came down here to show you that you can now build to negative 80 blocks. So you can build even further down as well. So as I showed you earlier, by creating up a void world, you have a total of 480 blocks that you can build with from top to bottom. So that is going to be a lot of room to build in. Look at this. We also found a dungeon. Oh, poor zombie. So next up, we're going to make another new world. But this time, we are not going to activate the pack until the world has been generated. Because as I explained, this solely depends on old chunks. So you could probably manipulate this in some pretty cool ways. So one way I was kind of thinking, was using a village seed. So if you were to load up a seed with the village and you don't load anything else but the village, then you could probably make a really cool survival challenge. I did leave the seed pretty quickly, so I'm kind of wondering how much of the village is gonna be there. And it regards the underworld. And oh yes, we got a big void around this area. It also looks like four chunks of the ocean loaded in. But other than that, let's look at this. We got a bunch of the village all in one chunk. So we can literally make a really cool survival challenge by utilizing an add-on like this. Down below in the description you will find a link to this pack, but if you guys make anything cool with this mechanic, then go ahead and send them over to Twitter to me, and maybe I may look at them for a video. My Twitter link is down below in the description. There's also one very interesting thing about this. So while it may look like all the chunks are gone, they're actually not gone. They are somehow saved inside the world data. So if I click on save and quit, and I deactivate our behavior pack, then I go back into the world, we're now outside the world and the chunks have come back. However, it does look like one chunk did not come back. There's also another chunk error over there as well. But besides that, it looks like the world is pretty normal. So nothing too much has changed drastically. But as of right now, that is it for everything that we can do for dimension editing. And maybe in the future, Mojang may give us even more features. Like I think it would be really cool if you got ourselves like a cave generator type where maybe we could turn the entire overworld into some kind of cave world. Or maybe the ability of editing the nether or the end, maybe creating our own dimensions. I would love to hear your thoughts up in the comments on what you think of this new behavior. If you guys enjoyed today's video, then let me know by leaving a like on it, subscribe if you're around here, and for now, hope you have a logical day, and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.